A year ago this week, I was in the hospital um, for a really sad reason. I thought that I was at the end of my life by my own choice. Uh, I was going through something that was really difficult. It was really embarrassing. And I was ready to give up. Friends of mine made sure that I got help. They took me. Um, and just made sure that I wasn't alone. And so I went into a hospital a year ago. And at first I wouldn't talk to anybody. I was pretty ashamed of myself. And I just, I thought nobody there is going to be kind to me. Um, everybody's going to be against me. And honestly, I kind of thought, well, I deserve it. Like I, I felt pretty low and I thought everything was my fault. I deserve it. Um, and I didn't, I wasn't ready to handle the onslaught of rejection that I knew was coming. So I just stayed quiet. And that was for a few days. Eventually, I did start to talk to people. But I didn't tell them why I was there in a way that like, made a case for myself. I wasn't defending myself or giving reasons why I was actually an okay person. I was actually making the strongest case against myself that I could. And anybody that tried to be kind to me, I would say to them, you don't understand. Like, this is my fault. Um, I deserve everything I'm going through. Because I thought I did. But I remember that not a single person, not a single other patient in there, was unkind to me. And it's like, no matter what, they said, you don't deserve to go through this. And of course, I rejected that and thought, well, yes, I do. Of course I do. And the more that they were kind to me, the more I began to expose about myself because I thought, they just don't know. Like, they're being kind, but these poor people are so naive. They, they don't know. If they really knew, if they knew me, well, you know, then they, then they wouldn't support me. Then they wouldn't, they wouldn't be kind. You know, I think we do that to ourselves a lot when we encounter kindness that we don't think we deserve. We think, well, if you, you're you nice to me right now, but if you really knew, if you really knew what this certain thing about me, or when you find out this next thing, that's, that's when you'll turn. That's when all of this will be gone. But instead of making me want to hide it for that reason, it made me want to expose all of those things. Like, I was going to prove to them that their compassion was misplaced. And at one point we were in group therapy and everybody was at the, they were saying like, are you getting what you need out of group? Are you getting what you need out of group? And everybody was like, yeah, it's so supportive and all that usual stuff. And it got to me and I, I kind of let the group have it. I said, no, I'm not getting what I need from the group because this group is too kind to me. I don't need kindness. I don't need people to accept me or tell me that I'm worth whatever. I need this group to be cruel to me. I need to be terrified by your wrath and by your judgment. That's what I need. Stop letting me off the hook. Stop acting like everything is okay and that you accept everything. Stop acting like I deserve better. Um, I need punishment. That's what I need. So until this group is able to really be tough with me, then no, I'm not getting what I need from it. And the, the other people in there were kind of shocked. I think, I think they, they didn't really know what to do with that. And I kind of just sort of retreated back like I had before and sort of kept to myself. But amazingly, some of the other people in the, in the group, they wouldn't let me punish myself like that. These other patients, they would come up to me and tell me that, uh, that they understood, that they felt that way too. That, that they didn't deserve anybody to be kind to them either. 
And I remember some of them, their arms were marked up with scars. And some of them were there because they tried to take their own lives. Some were there because other people had tried to take their lives from them. And yet there they were, trying to be kind to me. And it wasn't like, aha, now I've got support. That, you know, it wasn't anything like that. Like, I was thinking it didn't work. Like, I tried to show people why I don't deserve this kind of support. And here they are doing it anyway. Like, how could they be so naive? Surely they know that I don't deserve this. But the only thing that they said I didn't deserve was the cruelty and the pain and the humiliation. Eventually, the other patients realized that I could draw. And I had my little, uh, you know, the therapy notebook that doesn't have any coil spring in it or maybe the little, the little tiny golf pencils that you write with and then we race her. And, and I started sketching in my journal and some of the other patients were like, wow, hey, we really like that. Hey, would you draw me? And I would say, yeah, sure. If you'll, if you'll sit for me, then I'll draw you. But the, the uh, condition is I want to keep the drawing. Like I, it stays with me. So you have to, you know, you have to consent that I can keep the drawing. And that means that your likeness will be going home with me leaving this hospital. So consider confidentiality stuff or anything like that. And they were like, oh yeah, that's totally fine. In fact, can I sign it when you're done? Like they wanted, they wanted their identities connected to these drawings. And so I would sit there and, and, and draw them while they were hanging around and talking to each other and eating snacks or whatever. And each time I drew someone, when they looked at it, they were like, oh my God, I look so good. And there were people in there that had eating disorders and body issues and self-loathing. And I didn't draw them in any kind of um, generous way. Like I drew them accurately the way that they really are. But when they saw themselves in the art, they thought, I look beautiful. Like I didn't know that, 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 I, that I, was, I, I looked like that. And I think that it was different from a photograph because the drawing was a product of somebody paying attention, somebody seeing them, not capturing them with a click, but someone studying the, the shapes of their faces and the arc of their nose and the way that their hair falls around their ears, things like that. And the drawings themselves are not actually fantastic. And like I said, I, I, I didn't dress anybody up more attractively in the drawings than they were in real life. Um, so I don't think that it was the technical portrayal that they were complimenting. I think that when they said that it made them feel beautiful, what they were remarking on is that they felt seen, that somebody had noticed them, that somebody had focused on them and looked at them, not with a gratuitous gaze on them, not wanting something back from them, not staring at them as an object, but looking at them with the purpose of wanting to create something about them or from them. And to some of them, that was a new experience, that, that they could be represented in an act of creation and not in an act of degradation. And I still have that journal and it has all those drawings in it of each, each person. And, um, I realized later that that was a good symbol for what I needed. I didn't need punishment. I didn't need humiliation. What I needed was to be seen, not to be the center of attention, nothing like that. I actually didn't want to be, but to have my humanity witnessed, like at a time in my life where I was being told both by myself and by others that I was worthless, and ugly, and stupid, and useless. All these things that were, I was shouting at them in my own head and, and hearing them in the voices of other people and having dreams where these things were being said to me. And I think what I needed was to be seen as a human being that was different from that 
as somebody that was actually worth something, worthy of something. And it wasn't something that I had to earn. I could tell anyone anything about my story, any bad thing about my life. And um, I didn't have to like earn my humanity, being treated like a human being who, who just deserves life. It doesn't mean I deserve anything special. It doesn't mean I deserve um, lack of accountability or anything like that, but just my humanness. I needed to have that seen because I wasn't even seeing it in myself. And in the process of drawing others, I was able to connect with those people in a way that they also could see me back as well. So that was just something I experienced, and that was a year ago this week. Um, I spent eight days in. I also learned a lot about going through, dealing with trauma, uh, dealing with uh, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, um, which I still have. I, I I have an actual clinical diagnosis. This is not, you know, a self-described condition. I have a, I have an actual clinical diagnosis of PTSD. And so I've, I've been learning this whole year um, how to deal with that, how to deal with nightmares and bad dreams and startling sounds. Um, and right now dealing with anniversary issues being a year later. Um, I'm also dealing with the loss of a lot of friends. There's a lot of people who have not understood the situation that I've been in. And they've, they've even misunderstood through having some incorrect information. And I've had to very sadly see people of whom I'm incredibly fond make the choice to disembark from friendships and relationships with me. And one of the things that I've learned is that me fighting back, like me retaliating and me like laying out a case for myself or anything like that is not healing. Instead, what I need to do is go on and live life the best I can and try to uplift the worth of other people that I encounter, listen to them, listen to their stories, um, like I did in the hospital, um, try to see them, see them just beyond their image, but as, as people. And so that's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to do. Those are the things in my life that I'm, I'm trying to do. And uh, one last thought before I'm done here. There's an artist that he said something to me. This isn't his own idea. This is something that a lot of artists have said before, but this artist said to me, in some sense, every painting or every work of art is a self-portrait, which is very interesting because that means like here I am painting this bear in the mountains. Like how in the world is this a self-portrait? Well, what that means is you put something of yourself into everything that you're doing. Even the choice, like why did I choose to paint this? What does that mean? Um, how is this saying something about myself? So after telling you that whole story, this is what I've come to realize. Like just now, like while I'm painting, I've just realized this. Is a year ago, I was in the hospital, scared and humiliated, in the dark, um, not sure how much life I've had left in me, really. And what I'm seeing here is these this gray overcast sky. It's, it's sort of like, a, maybe it's after a summer storm. And then I have this bear that's coming out into this sunlit area. The, the, the glow of sunlight through, the, through all this overcast. And so this, is, this, this bear is emerging after a storm into the light. So maybe that should be the title 
after the storm into the light. And this is a painting that's autobiographical about the last year of my life.